To turn on the KT LCD display, first turn on your battery, then press the middle function button for three seconds. This brings up the first of three information displays about showing information about your e-bike, such as battery levels, trip distance, temperature, cruise function, lights, brakes, motor temperature, error codes, and more. To scroll through the three displays, press the middle function button briefly and it will change from display to display. To control the general project settings, hold down the up and down arrow keys for three seconds. This will bring you to your first settings. Here you can control maximum speed, wheel size, very important, miles per hour versus kilometers, temperature settings, and more. To change the settings, use the up and down arrow keys. When your selection appears, press the middle function button. It will save your settings and allow you to scroll to the next setting. When you're done making your selections, hold down the up and down arrow keys for three seconds. This will bring you to the parameter settings menu, where you'll see a blinking P1 at the bottom of your screen. P1 controls your motor characteristics parameters. You're going to want to check with your manufacturer for the correct settings for your, for your particular motor. Press the middle button to scroll to P2. P2 controls the wheel speed pulse signal. Again, if you don't know, consult with your manufacturer. It's really important not to change these default settings unless you know specifically about your motor. P3 sets your pedal assist functions. The settings are 0 through 5. When set to 0, the throttle is dependent on the pedal assist system gear ratio. When set to 5, the throttle will provide the most amount of power. P4 sets the throttle startup settings. This is an important one. When set to 1, the throttle will only activate the motor after the motor has been activated by a pedaling. When set to 0, the throttle will activate the motor when triggered. P5 is the power monitor setting. Again, this is important. If the setting isn't set, set correct, you won't be able to determine how much you have left in your battery. There are settings there for 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt. But if you don't know the correct settings, set this to zero for real-time voltage mode. It'll give you a correct readout of how much you have left in your battery. When done with these five settings, press the up and down arrow keys to move to the C parameter settings. C1 is your throttle startup setting. Check your manual for your preferred settings. C2 is your motor phase classification coding mode. These parameters set the different phases of the motor when using a scene wave drive. You'll know if you have a scene wave drive. C3 is your power assist ratio gear. The settings are 0 through 5, 0 being the least pedal assisted by the motor and 5 being the most. C4 is your handlebar function settings. This controls various aspects of your throttle handling. C5 controls your maximum operating current. Again, check your manual for the appropriate settings. Very important. C6 is the backlit brightness setting for your LCD display. Settings are 1 through 5, 5 being the brightest. C7 is your cruise function setting if your controller supports cruise. Zeros for disabled, 1 enables it. C8 is the motor operating temperature display setting. Zero means disabled, one means enabled. I enable this, I want to know how, how hot my motor is. C9 is the startup password setting. If you choose to put a password, you can scroll through your settings and create your own password. C10 is the restore default setting. This is important if you've entered the wrong settings and need to start over. Press Y to reset and N to keep the existing settings. C11 is your LCD attribute setting. Choices are 0 through 2. I would leave this at 0. C12 parameters are setting for the controller's minimum operating voltage. Again, I can't say this enough. Check your manual. C13 is the ABS brakes and anti-charge control settings. Again, check your manual before changing this. And finally, C14 is your power assist tuning setting. The settings are 1 through 3, 3 being the strongest. That's completely your choice. I hope this helps and enjoy all the great things your e-bike can. So this is my SW900 e-bike computer. And basically it controls my 9 MOSFET tube controller, which basically controls all aspects of my e-bike. The control functions themselves are controlled by three buttons on the left, the up arrow, the down arrow, and the middle arrow, which is the multifunction button. There are so many things that you can control on this panel. I'm going to walk you through what those functions are and what impact they have on the bike. So what you'll see is the three buttons on the left here are controlling your computer. The up and down, the middle of multifunction. A long hold, once the battery is turned on, will turn on the LCD display and 
There you can see that's my odometer. You'll see various functions here which I'll illustrate to you. And you can go through it. So this, this middle area is going to give you your speed, your battery, how much battery you've got left. I just came back from a 35-mile bike ride, so I only have three bars left. This is your wattage. You want to keep an eye on your wattage while you're riding so that you don't overextend the bike. This is your pedal assist mode. There's five of them here. You can go through them with the up arrow, one, two, three. As you go through, number five uses the most motor energy and the least pedal energy. Number one uses the most, it's an eco, it's an eco selection so that you'll, your pedaling is more than your, your motor. If you press the up and down arrows, this will get you into your, your panel, which has 15 functions which you can control. Number one is how uh, light you want your LCD display, one being the darkest, number three being the brightest. I keep mine on three. I live in a very sunny area, so I like to see uh, as much as I can. It's completely your choice. Number two is whether or not you want to register through kilometers or miles per hour. So the selection of zero gives you kilometers. Number one gives you miles. Number three, which is usually set at the factory, is the voltage of the battery that you're using and the motor. And mine is a 48 volt uh, battery and motor, so I, I pick 48. Number four is sleep time, so when you want the LCD display to go to sleep, you can choose between zero and 60 or not at all. So th basically that's your choice. Number five is pedal assist mode. You have two choices. Zero is for three grades of pedal assist, and one is for five grades of pedal assist, five giving you more sensitivity in terms of the control of how much pedaling you do versus the work of the motor. Number six is your wheel size. Very important that you change this. The default at the factory is 26 inches, which is a very common for off-road bikes. Mine is a 29, so I use 29. Uh, there's 27.5, there's lots of different sizes, 20 inch wheels bases. So determine which size wheel you have and that really impacts the bike in terms of your speedometer, the miles calculated, and speed. Number seven is the speed measuring magnet. It ranges from one to a hundred. Now this is usually set at the factory to a default number for your engine and your controller. Mine, because mine's a 48 volt thousand watt motor, Mine is set to 46. I would not mess with this. This determines the accuracy of detecting your speed, your distance. So stick with whatever the default setting is. Number eight is your speed limit. This is really important. Depending on where you live, whether it's Canada, the United States, or Europe, Europe, the limit for e-bikes is 15 miles per hour. Many of the governors are set on, on the motors there. Here in the United States and California, we can go up to 28 miles per hour. But you can set this motor between 0 and 100, so you can get the maximum speed out of the motor. But if you're concerned about putting a governor on in terms of reducing the speed, you can control it on this setting in number 8. It's very, very important. Whether you're concerned about safety or you're concerned about law, what the speed limit of the motor is is very important. Number 9 is called zero start or non-zero start, and basically de facto is to set it to zero, which means you can have immediate access to the throttle. If you press number 1, which is a non-zero start, it is a delayed reaction to the throttle kicking in. Number 10 is driving mode, which determines which PAS system you're using. There's three choices, zero, one, and two. Zero is driven by the PAS, your pedal assist system, and there's no throttle available. Number one is driven completely by the throttle with no PAS or pedal assist. And number two is a combination of pedal assist and throttle. Number 11 is pedal assist sensitivity, and it ranges from one to 24. I pick, because I use a lot of pedaling, I pick the highest number, to number 24, so I get the most out of the pedal assist, which also gives me a much longer range, much less effort on the, on the motor and on the battery. Pedal assist start strength is how quickly your pedal assist kicks in. So if it ranges from 0 to 5, I pick 5, so there's more sensitivity to when it immediately starts in. The PAS magnet is number 13. There are three different types. The choices are 5, 8, and 12. Usually those are set at the uh, manufacturer level by default. Mine is number 5, uh, but you want to probably stick with the default mechanism that comes with your motor. 
Number 14, I would bypass altogether. It's the current limiting of your controller. If you're, if you're an electronics buff, you might want to mess around with this a little bit. You have a choice between 1 and 20 amps. The de facto is set at 12 amps. Number 15 is set, again, at the factory and is not anything that you can change. These are the 15 different choices that your uh, control your bike, how fast it operates, how much pedal assist you can get, your wheel size, your speed sensitivity.